it is interesting to notice how valuable things that we usually take for granted become when these are not as readily available anymore. Just think about the AC going out on that warm, muggy summer day. Or just think about your cable TV not working the day of the big game. It is also interesting to consider how there are certain things that we value. You know, some precious materials are very rare, so we value them. But even things that don't have any intrinsic value, like being able to give an invitation because it comes only once a year, may be valuable to us. Or family time, relationships with our family. I remember uh, I have an older sister, and during my last years of high, uh, high school, she went off to college. She went far away, and so she was only able to come home for a couple of months over the summer. And this one summer, we uh, had an argument at some point, and of course, I was right and she was wrong. That's what she thought. Um, but eventually, she came to me when we were still kind of upset at each other, and she said, I only have a few more weeks here, and I do not have time to be upset. That was very valuable. I see my sister one week per year or so. I see my parents two or three weeks per year. That time is valuable. And then, lastly, it's interesting to consider how we just don't value things that are actually are valuable. We, we just have plenty of. Think about food. We waste so much food every week. And food is valuable. But we have so much, and we think we can get it at any time, anywhere, that we don't value it as much. Well, we can apply certain perceptions of what we value and how we value it to our spiritual life. If you turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll read there a few verses. Uh, we'll read in different sections. We'll read the first nine verses. But we'll start with the first uh, three verses in Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 1 through 3, Paul says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that now is working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. We are spiritually rich because God allows us to. God allows us to be spiritually rich. There's nothing we have done, says Paul here. Actually, we were dead, verse 1. And we were dead because we lived in the lust of our flesh, verse 3. We lived in, uh, we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. We were dead. By ourselves, we are nothing more than spiritual beggars. We have nothing to hold on to. That's what Paul is saying. Verse 1, we were dead. Verse 4, but God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse 7, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. We were dead. But God, God rich in mercy, verse 4, he gave us mercy. Uh, second part of verse 4, God being rich in love, he gave us love. Verse 5, God made us alive together with Christ again, and we can be raised up with him and sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, verse 6. And then we may enjoy the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus, verse 7. God made us rich. It is not a payment that he owed us, though. It is a gift 
Verse 8 and 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of work so that no one may boast. It is nothing we have done, nothing we have earned, it is a gift. It is always nice to receive gifts, especially nice ones, precious ones. The problem with gift, with a gift is that we don't really know what the value of the gift is, unless I guess it is a, a gift card that says, you know, $25, $50. We don't know, and we don't know how much time the giver has spent preparing for it, thinking about it, getting the gift. The risk with that is that we may receive something really precious, but because we don't know the value of it, we don't value it. It came for free. It can be the most wonderful, precious things that there is, but if it came for free, we may not value it. There's a risk that we do the same with the kingdom of God, with salvation, with the blood of Christ. It is something rare, unique, and it's valuable. But it is even more valuable because it is undeserved. And then, it is readily available. And something that is precious, but it is readily available, we may treat like food, we may treat like family time. We may just waste it if we are not careful. That's the risk with salvation. And by now we know how valuable things become. When they are always available, but that one time, they're just not there. Air conditioning on a warm summer day. Cable signal, the day of the game. What about realizing that you had salvation there? But you didn't do anything. You always thought, oh yeah, my spiritual pantry. Oh, there's plenty of salvation in there. I can get in any time. I can go to the salvation restaurant and eat my full meal of salvation. We may end up treating it like food. It is valuable but it is also readily available. It is a gift. Do me a favor. Don't throw away the most precious thing that you have. If you won the lottery and you left your ticket in the pants and you put them in the laundry and it was all washed out, would you feel bad? Well, we're talking about something it is a lot more valuable. It has to do with your eternal life. Brothers and sisters, let's all value salvation. And if you are visiting with us tonight, understand the value of salvation. And if there's anything that you have done that got in the way of how you value salvation, of, of you having access to it, we are here to help you. We are here to pray for you and encourage you. So why don't you come forward as we stand and as we sing?